fifth match is currently so the students are kind of crushing it so far. How will Uraraka and Aoyama do? Interesting. Uraraka's been training hard with her gun hero, and Aoyama has a tummy beam. I don't know. <laughs> Get back to your training. Deku would overthink it too. Listen to your partner. What is this weird like hypnosis he's doing? He got her. Wait, what? What is he trying to do? Was this intentional? Oh, she can like. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Damn, they pulled it off. The lessons I learned from Gunhead just so happened to come in handy here. After Ayama like did exactly what he wanted with you, <laughs> that escalated quickly. Is that Ayama's true quirk, making people blush? I mean, he's made me blush a couple times, so you know something about that tummy beam. <laughs> I don't like it. It weirds me out for reasons that I cannot explain. Stripping the varnish. I can't believe she thought to use her opponent's power to get in close. I don't think that was her. I don't yeah. Know. It looked to me like Ochako just lost focus and let go for a second. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very observant, Sue. Oh man, Deku would love to know this too. It's too bad for you. Uraraka won. Not surprising. I'm happy for her. Yeah, and both of you passed too. Congrats. Ribbit. They're just such great kids. <laughs> How many people would like actually do this in high school? Like root for each other? You're going to have to fight against Principal Nezu. Oh no. Principal no chance. School. No chance. <laughs> I've long suspected Nezu of having ex extremely potent powers. It's not for nothing he has that crazy scar. Dude is experienced. No, no. Messed up. You messed up. What's that noise? That's Nezu closing in on you. He's gonna destroy you. He's just toying with them. Why yes, I am. Not even breaking his sweat. Yeah, yeah. I can cause chain reactions depending on what I destroy. Such calculations are as easy for me to make as a simple cup of tea. That's his quirk? Math? <laughs> Geometry, the ultimate quirk. One by one, I'm sealing off every direct path to the escape gate. Is this a metaphor for him being manipulative? <laughs> oh, so much for him being calm and not spilling his teeth. High specs. He's actually an animal with a quirk that makes him smarter than humans. Intelligence. That's kind of cool, having him actually be an animal and his quirk being being smarter than most humans. Wait, what'd you say about vengeance? In the past, humans conducted horrible experiments on Nesu. Oh, that's awful. So in times like this, he gets his vengeance. This way. <laughs> Wait, right into his high IQ trap. That's not good. <laughs> He's taking his vengeance thing a, a little bit far. Use your heads. Think carefully. He's drunk on his power. <laughs> I feel like this is gonna end with them doing his chores or something like that. He's just making them move every step of the way. They can't attack him if they don't know where to find him. What an impressive brain! They're gonna get tricked into doing his taxes. Team Hachido and Kaminari have failed due to the time expiring. Oh, yeah. Never, st never stood a chance. It's not like they were even close. They never even got to him. Here I went and left one escape route open for them because I'm so nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, do not want to get on this guy's bad side. Oh, Chaco. What were you talking to Aoyama about <laughs> right before the end of your match? Sue just sees right through it. Just cuts right through it. Let's avoid combat with Present Mike if possible and head straight for the escape gate. Is it because she has sensitive hearing and Present Mike is the loudest man in the world? <laughs> That's his normal talking voice. <laughs> I bet he's just standing at the gate waiting for us. That's exactly what he's doing. Hurry up, Ed. He's a real danger with this quirk, actually. This could do permanent damage. Present Mike, his quirk, voice. I like how Aizawa did it. That's such a good touch. Crazy base. Thank you, Aizawa. You control bugs and stuff, right? Look at this, an ally. Is he afraid of bugs? <laughs> okay then. Thanks for the help. <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> so effective. What should we? Do? <laughs> Sorry, I know it's scary, but <laughs> that's so great. You want to be a hero, don't you? If so, then we gotta pass. She's really taking charge. Chiro's ears oh, are damn. bleeding. She had to fight because I ran away. Time to step up. Do the best that you can for now. Wait a minute. I got into UA, didn't I? You belong to be here. You deserve to be here. My heart should be without fear. I have to be Flush Ultra! There you go. Take out the man who's responsible for all this terrible noise! You can 
<laughs> There's an idea I like that's connected to this. Like he was saying, I should be without fear. And I've done the same thing. Like I know the feeling of having a very intense emotion and then being sort of frustrated by the fact that I have that emotion and then trying to like power my way into not having it. But a lot of the time that feels like it makes it deeper. Like somehow by resisting it, it like feeds into it. But another way of looking at it and maybe a practical way through it is to not focus so much on the emotions themselves and just sort of let them be and focus on the action. And actually in the case of fear, let's say, I think that's what courage is. Courage is not the absence of fear, but like acting despite the fear. Or for example, like being forgiven or being merciful, let's say. It's not about like not being angry anymore or not being upset. It's about like making the right choice anyway. I guess maybe that's only a small distinction, but for me, I like to think about it that way. It helps me get through some of the, the worst worst things, worst emotions. What's the deal? Are they gonna run down the clock and hide out the whole time? How do you feel about insects? This is why I hate the outdoors so much! Yeah! He let a few bugs beat him. <laughs> Wow, they won too. Damn, well, what's the student's record now? What are they like? Five and two? Four and two? This is impressive. They're crushing it. The teachers are regretting these weights right now. I guess they designed it really well. I guess the point is to have them pass, but while being forced to be pushed to their limits, right? You don't want to make tests expecting students to fail. The cool thing about it is that they're really earning it. Like, that was pretty clever and took courage. This is... How do you, like... How do you do this? And you'll be shot. only one man. What kind of waivers do the students have to sign for this school? How was your day at school today, son? It's good, mom. Just got shot in the knee. Got shot in the wrist. You all right, Gakure? Oh no, Gakure? is she alive? Oh no! How do you know she's okay? So that's what she's doing. Oh. <laughs> I thought she was dead. I thought, that was, I thought we were looking at her dead body. <laughs> Speaking of courage. Aren't you giving up a little too easy for a hero? Good insight. So that you didn't take it all the way. Yeah, did you not know that they were you were fighting Invisible Girl? Hagakure is the best there is at stealth ops. I mean, yeah. had the guts to face Mr. Snipe head on. Yeah, yeah, that's no small task. That was huge. Easily could have died taking a bullet to the knee. Hey, Deku, is it your matchup next? Shouldn't you be waiting in the exam area? Oh. You're afraid to face Bakugo? It's definitely interesting to see how each team uses their quirks. Yeah, I feel like it's a great opportunity you don't want to miss. Every one of them embodies what it means to be a UA student. And that's what attracted me to Deku. One of our peers is giving up. <laughs> Damn it, Mineta! <laughs> I had such high hopes for you. But he was looking forward to the training camp so much. Why is he ready to give up now? Wait? Wait for it? Wait for it? Is it a trick? Have some faith. Midnight! Her quick some no Yeah, never mind. <laughs> Where are you going, grape juice? The gate. It's a fake out, it's a decoy. He's got- Girl, oh my god. Bastard. I'll never forgive you for getting to be in her lap! Is he crying blood? He's crying blood. I'd be the one curled up with her right now! Do something about it. It might be hard for a kid like that to make it out of this school. I'm worried about him now. Students need to have a concrete goal to focus on. If your desire is just to be a hero for no reason, your path isn't going to be easy. Let me tell you something. Mineta has one of the strongest goals of all time, and that's to impress women. <laughs> you think that's not a strong motivation? You are wrong. I mean, he's not going to do it well. He's mostly going to just creep them out. But he will really put in that effort, though. But if he aligns that correctly, he's going to be unstoppable. His sticky balls will be all over everyone's faces. <laughs> Is there a goal in that child's heart he can focus on to win? Yes. <laughs> I want girls to love me so I can touch them. Well, that's well, straightforward. I mean, it's powerful, though. Let's be real. So, Benetta, are you really sure you came to UA to be a hero? <sighs> so it really cuts to the bone. She just sees everything. You want to see it? You'll have to go with me, Ben. Okay, that sounds great. Oh, this kind of hurts. I wanted to be a pro so I'd be popular with the girls. Aww. I thought they'd fall in love with me once I became a real hero. Oh, this would be endearing if it wasn't for like all the creepiness. The creepy stuff. It actually would be like sympathetic. I feel like everyone can understand this on some level, no? Attraction is a powerful thing, and like as an adolescent, you can just get destroyed by that. You can get crushed to the point where like it affects the rest of your life. It's that potent. What they just depicted there in that classroom, those are some of the deepest cuts you can experience. To feel that you're undesirable, or even worse, to feel like the people you're attracted to are repulsed by you. As an adolescent is one of the most difficult things to recover from, I think. That creates real baggage. At a young age, it's nearly impossible to have the perspective on your whole life and the fact that like 
you can find someone good for you. If you make yourself good, I believe that if you become someone that you yourself deeply respect, not arbitrarily, but based on things that you've accomplished for yourself, it's hard for me to believe that you won't find that attraction. But in middle school, let's say, or early high school, a day is a year and you just don't have perspective on, on the whole. And speaking as a guy who likes girls, girls are just so far ahead of guys. Like they're women when you're a boy, you know, there's like a certain critical like time. And that shit hurts so bad. The double tragedy of it though, is that like, it's bad already. Like he's starting in a really bad place where he's going to get messed up by this, but it's led him down the wrong track where he's pushing everyone away from him. No healthy girl is ever going to like his behavior because he's just creepy. I'm perfectly fine with his motivation. You know, whatever makes you feel alive, whatever calls you to become better. But I really would like him to channel that more more effectively, more productively. But I have a feeling he's just sort of like that, that character, you know, for some weird comedy. What are you going to do about it now, Mineta? Damn it. I thought it'd make me cool. Oh. <gasps> Hurts me too. You know what's sad about that too? I haven't really gotten to super high levels of anything, but I've gotten far enough along in certain ways where I realized very quickly that those things are not as socially effective as I think they might be. So for example, having like had experiences with limited amounts of fame, it wears out really quickly. Having had moments in my life where like I had the money to be really fun and extravagant, that only goes so far. Unless you're at the really, really extreme ends of it, that's a little bit different. But generally speaking, and my theory, even for those extremes, is that at the end of the day, it comes back to who you are. And that might sound idealistic and naive, but I really think that that's what it is because this is true for just all socialization. But since we're talking about attraction, I've been attracted to all sorts of people who did not have any of those qualities. And I've been very unattracted to people who had things that in name, you know, or on paper were amazing. And I've been on the other side of that too, right? Like I've had people be really into me when I had absolutely nothing. And I've had people turn me away despite like on paper, me having everything and approaching it wrong. I think there's no avoiding some kind of superficiality to things. Types aside, I think there are just certain traits that are attractive. But things like status and money to me seem like representations of the actual things than the things themselves. And those things I think are like the ability to be commanding socially, the ability to be commanding in a group, to be leaders, for example, specifically for guys, I think. And so often charisma will go farther than money because it's deeper. And charisma, weirdly, is harder to fake where anyone can luck into money. Anyone can luck into status. And charisma, I feel like, is linked to self-reliance and resilience and actual positive traits. And those things can be built at the individual level. So overall, I'm like optimistic about it. It's like a positive thing for me. And Mineta could build his way out of it. I feel like he needs a mentor, honestly, like a real mentor, not some lady who makes him vacuum. And that way he's a victim. He needs like a good, like a good father figure, a good like uncle figure or something. I don't know. I figured I'd stay posted at the escape gate until time ran out. But on second thought, I have a deeper itch that needs to be scratched. Oof, phrasing. In many ways, she's worse because she's an My adult. came to UA, I had a brush with death. And after that, I realized something. There you go. Being a hero doesn't make you cool. People become heroes because they're cool. Right, right. But I hope he internalizes that the right way, which is to become cooler first, to become better first. But Fredrick won't work like that, will it? Use Zero's tape. Smart. There you go, Mineta. You're right where I want you. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, he gets text and everything. I think that kid pulled one over on all of us. Told you. Who did he not fool? Who's the one person he didn't fool? <laughs> That's right. That's what I said the whole time. Thanks to me. That was pretty cool. Uh, come on. Give it to him. Give the guy his, his due. He walked through that gate like a champ. Good job. I'll try my best to be a hero too. So I don't let our class down. You got a bunch of struggles at once. You gotta fight All Might while fighting Bakugo, in a way. Ready? Go. They're not ready. But they're awesome. Oh, what the heck? I love how self-aware that is about Mineta. It's kind of great. That force should not be underestimated. And I think that's actually a worthwhile cause. I mean, you hope you're not stuck on that that plane your whole life. One way I like to conceptualize it is the, the hierarchy of needs, you know, like there are just things you need to solve for yourself to reach, let's say, like a, a state of optimal living. Things like, you know, just basic survival needs and then like safety and having a social life, having, you know, decent people in your life and romance and like career and fulfillment in endeavors and self-realization. I mean, I'm kind of butchering the levels here, but you get the point. And romance is a big one. It's one I see people get stuck on for very long periods of time. 
and it's worth addressing, you know, it's it's worth solving that. I feel like all sorts of things can go wrong if you don't sort of work that out for yourself in a satisfactory level. It's not something to be ignored. I feel like no one gets out unscathed. I feel like no one comes out of middle school or high school not having some, like, soul-crushing <laughs> romantic experiences, you know what I mean? Usually in the form of some kind of rejection or personal embarrassment. It kind of messes you up, like it lingers in the back of your mind and it comes out in all sorts of weird ways. But given that, you know, given that's a natural thing people experience, I think there's something to approaching it like approaching anything else, which is a desire to understand it and a desire to like function well in it. And the reason I think it's difficult for people and the reason why I think people get stuck there a lot is because it starts with having to admit that there's room to improve. And that's really threatening, especially for matters of like romance and sexuality. But the good news I think is that it can be approached like anything else, you know, like any other challenge. It's just a matter of, first of all, starting with openness about the fact that you want to improve, like Mineta is doing, you know, weirdly. Seeing it as something worth pursuing. Then having a certain tolerance for pain and understanding that you're going to fall flat on your face a lot <laughs> and being okay with that in regard to what the big picture is. And then just like doing it, like getting out there. I remember at some point deciding that I wanted to sort of figure this out. And so I actively like put myself in situations where I would be forced to like interact a lot and, and improve socially. I feel like that that process was like a, a very strong jet stream that just whittled away all the all the excess, you know, all the unnecessary things. And it gave me a bigger picture perspective that allowed me to just relax and take it easy, be myself, and also to have the, the mental energy to focus on things that actually did make me better. And so things started to like spiral upwards. And honestly, as crazy as this is gonna sound, I feel like that's one of the best things I ever did for my Myself, is like realizing that it's something that I wanted to focus on and focusing on it and sort of answering that question for myself. It's like no longer a question that gives me baggage. It's something that I just have faith in and that makes things so much better and so much freer. I still do, if I'm being honest, fall too hard sometimes. I fall for people too hard still. In fact, that just happened to me. But that'll be solved too. So yeah, why not? Like, I don't see any problem with Mineta having that as his focus. Like, deal with the stage of life that you're at. You do yourself a disservice by not admitting that that's what you want. You know, that it's something that's important to you. You follow the call and you don't always know what that call is. And sometimes the call feels ridiculous, but the call is a call for a reason. The hobbits didn't predict it would be Gandalf arriving at their door, but nevertheless, Gandalf did. And so they went on the Lord of the Rings journey. In that context, I just hope that Mineta's not not always a creep about it. I hope he actually gains some insight there, because this is not the way. I support Mineta's ambition. I support his character growth, even if I don't support his behavior, if that makes sense. Just for reasons of like tropes, I don't think he'll get out of it, but it'd be really great if he did, you know, if he actually learned something. Well, the show's not over yet, right? Maybe he'll, he'll become like an actual person of value in the process. That'd be great. So yeah, that's uh, the end of what was sort of a weird episode. See you guys next time for the second to last episode of season two.